Welcome back. I hope that you can hear me well. We will kick, kick off the afternoon session by launching the 2020 um, catalog of Blurring the Lines. Uh, for the fifth edition, we received 151 very high quality projects coming from 38 participating uh, photography institutions worldwide. For this edition, the curators Lisanna Van Happen, Steve Bisson, and John Fleetwood selected three winners, 33 finalists, and gave 26 special mentions. The latter will be part of the PhotoDoc Digital Expert Exchange Program, and the artists will have the opportunity to pitch their projects to a large group of international experts. 2020 will be remembered as the year in which the world faced unprecedented decisions to do everything needed to remain united, competitive, and rooted in so solidarity. A year in which education system change, uh, a year of health disparities and socio socioeconomic inequalities, to name a few. This edition has a dis distinct fl flavor, and the theme commitment was an opportunity that allowed institutions and photographers to be part of this collective response somehow. Uh, the question of photography's commitment to real world issues and its relationship to societies provides significant directives for promoting a social engagement for photographers in changing photography as a powerful tool. During the large response was to create an active advocacy committee that promotes and supports parity, a global platform for discussing how non-formal models of education can succeed and how we can provide access to education despite geographic and socioeconomic inequalities. To everyone involved in this year's project, uh, in addition, I extend a sincere and heartfelt bravo, good work and thank you. A special mention to the academic institutions for their constant commitment over these five years and also to education in general. To the participants for their continuous creativity and commitment to life and social issues, especially in times of uncertainty and despair. And of course, to our partners that believe and support the importance of education as a tool to enhance progress and make the world a better place. I will now turn the floor to my dear colleagues and curators of this edition. I, in preparation of this uh, conversation, I asked them to maybe talk a little bit about uh, the topic, the theme of commitment and how they came up with this very good selection. Thank you very much and enjoy the conversation. Maybe Lisana, if you want to start. Thank you, Klaus. Uh, thank you everyone for inviting me. I'm um, happy to be part of this. Uh, uh, it was a great pleasure to be part of this jury and also a great pleasure to be part of this conference. Um, well, John, uh, Steve and I, uh, we talked a few months ago already about the selection uh, of the artists. Um, and uh, by choosing this uh, topic, I think it's uh, maybe mainly up to John to tell something about that because he mm -hmm. actually came up uh, with that specific topic, uh, which is fantastic, uh, I have to say, because um, I think it is all about commitment as a photographer these days. Um, and the projects that we have selected are coming from all over the world. So the commitment, uh, both locally, but also internationally, uh, to important topics is, is very relevant these days, um, especially when corona, corona is now also hitting us. Um, and you see that photographers cannot travel the world and have to focus on, on local issues, maybe even more than they're used to. Um, that's, that's quite interesting, uh, how you are committed to these local topics uh, and how these local topics are also um, um, connected to international bigger problems. Um, so I think the commitment of the photographer in relation to uh, their audience, to the people they work with, uh, the people they photograph, uh, that is very important. So, so that's why we thought the commitment uh, issue is something we can work with in general, uh, because that is something that, that probably bonds all these uh, photographers worldwide, no matter what they're dealing with on a more local personal level maybe. Would you like to add something to that maybe, Steve or John? Or? Well, I'll let John maybe in, introduce the, uh, the motivation also behind the, the choice of, for the first time actually in, the, in ever, we had a topic, a real topic. And so, and I think it would be great for maybe for John to, 
to maybe introduce uh, the theme of commitment. Okay, well, uh, so, so I think my, my uh, uh, part of this was actually finding the theme of commitment. So it was pre-decided. Uh, but when we started writing the Juris report, um, I, I was kind of interested in looking in this, uh, looking to this idea of a commitment to understand, um, very much uh, in the frame of what Zan had, had mentioned. Um, well, let's perhaps step back. That at the moment when when this uh, award started, it was actually uh, prior to 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 COVID, as we now know. So uh, the theme was commitment before uh, COVID. And for me, it was kind of interesting to see how that then shifts during this process of COVID. What is it that we see that uh, comes to the front? And other than the absolutely enjoyable moment to be able to look through all of this uh, double, uh, uh, all of this interesting work, I was quite amazed by, by the sense of how committed people are around the world to kind of different languages, different sensibilities, and thinking around how photography makes sense within particular spaces. And so our job was this commitment to understand. We needed to find um, how this work speaks to a global audience, a general larger audience, but also thinking the importance of this work within a more local context. I was particularly interested in these kind of sensibilities of languages and the fact that we that we speak about photography, but actually we are thinking about photographies, that it's a plural, that it's a diverse way of speaking to the world, different kind of ways of presenting images. And I think uh, there's incredibly important histories of photography around the world that sets up this kind of way of, of speaking. And even though we perhaps missed quite a bit uh, because of, of, of our inability to really understand all these languages, I think they also come together in a space of showing urgent and necessary work. And I think that in particular, the, the kind of wide scope of dealing with, uh, with urgent issues speaks about our world. Perhaps not, it, perhaps not such a great place, uh, but certainly a space of sharing. And I think the commitment to understand can only be improved by this ongoing sharing. I think that was really fantastic. Um, I mean, perhaps another point that I, that I wanted to mention is, uh, you know, behind every, behind every photographer, behind every student, there is a concerned educator. And uh, I'm, 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 uh, I'm very much uh, aware of the amount of attention uh, that it takes from lecturers, from our educators to make sure that photographers develop work, uh, the critical kind of aspects in developing this work. And I think one of the questions earlier today in the conversation was around empathy. And I think empathy starts with our lecturers, with those who train our photographers, with the institutions beyond them that shows empathy to their, to their staff. Uh, so this, this cycle of empathy is very much part of thinking around how we make great work. Um, what can I add to what Lisanne and John has said? Um, and in being um, the curator of this incredible um, project from the first edition, um, I can I can really tell that being part of this observatory is both uh, a privilege and a responsibility. It's a privilege because um, having a chance every year uh, to approach such um, a selection made by the network of schools, because there's a first selection which is made by the, uh, the schools with their, this year were more than about 24, uh, no more, sorry, but more than 30 schools from 24 countries. So it's a privilege to receive this selection first, huh? being person that work with images, that study research, you know, images. So it's really a privilege. 
such a, uh, I would say, a biodiv cultural biodiversity. Um, so it's, it's pretty amazing uh, to, to join this process. And this year, it, it, it become more exciting and challenging because every year there is an increasing number of schools. So we were very happy to, to have John on board with us because I mean, for us, uh, me and Lisanne, already the, the previous, last year edition was very difficult to, you know, look through uh, so many interesting works because the, the works that are submitted by school, you know, are always, you know, challenging. So that's why uh, it's a privilege, but it's also responsibility because then we have to make choices. And as the number of submission increase, it becomes more and more tough and difficult uh to yeah maybe it's also good to mention steve that yeah. that you started this together with klaus a few years ago and only three or four schools were participating and at this moment i don't know i don't even know how many schools there were uh, this edition uh many yeah 38 well, 38 so, 38 that were selected but we received more than that yes yeah, more than that and then some schools sometimes they're not able to uh, apply in time so like we, there are some schools who are in the network that didn't apply this year so actually the network is uh, i guess it's about 50 schools so far yeah so it's so growing it's so rapidly yeah it's growing rapidly and it's becoming more and more difficult to of course to make this selection because yeah you have to say no to works that are not easy so then it comes to what type of criteria do we use when we make choice? I would say the one very important criteria, of course, beyond the quality and 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 uh, the fact that the, the the project had to stick to a topic this year, uh, uh, we tried very much to um, uh, through the catalog to uh, create a comparison between school. I think this is a this is an important goal of this project not just to highlight very interesting works but also create a dialogue in between the different schools worldwide um, so so for me this is really a privilege and and but also very uh, uh, much a responsibility and also you, if you felt this responsibility as well Lisanne and John yeah I definitely did and I also think that what we also discussed quite a lot um, is the diversity element in the project because we have um, um, we also have the ambition to be more inclusive uh, that started with inviting more schools from different continents from different countries with different perspectives on photography and on the world in general um, I think that was fantastic this year that's what I really appreciated that we actually got the chance to include a lot of photographers coming from uh, different backgrounds, uh, different um, ways of, of uh, educating uh, photography. So I think that's um, that's very positive. But on the other hand, I also see that that the uh, the organization of blurring the lines um, is also developing, and uh, we are uh, three white uh, curators sitting here, uh, jury members, and I would also like to. Um, uh, to suggest that next edition, uh, we will try to uh, include uh, a jury member from every continent. Um, also to make sure that uh, representation is, uh, is, is done uh, thematically, uh, visually, uh, but also uh, through all different backgrounds and countries where people are coming from. Um, I think that was very much on top of our mind, this edition. Um, we have selected 57% um, uh, female artists. Um, I will be talking a bit more about that uh, in my uh, presentation. Uh, but I think this, uh, this idea of equality, representation, diversity is a very big uh, issue within the context uh, of this project, but also within photography in general. Um, so I think that there is a lot of ambition and, um, um, yeah, maybe you can also elaborate a bit more on that, uh, John, because you also had, um, yeah, ideas about that and yeah. Yes. I, th I think, you know, just to, to, uh, go back to this idea of this 
an award. Uh, like photography, uh, an award brings visibility, but it also brings invisibility. It, uh, it brings recognition, but it brings exclusion. And we are very aware of that. At the same time, I think that the grasp of work that is uh, collected in, into, this, uh, into this award or into this publication in particular, gives, a, gives one a sense of, um, of a very wide take of that. So I think uh, while, while we can acknowledge that, uh, I think it is, it is quite uh, exemplar in the fact that it, it wants to include so much and so many, and it does. Uh, and for me, that was, that was, uh, that was really good. Um, I think the idea of, of, of thinking around uh, specifics of the language of photography is, of course, a very important aspect. And I think most important, if we start to keep, uh, if we start to think about this publication, this book, is uh, for the photographers to spend some time in thinking around uh, what does it mean to be part of such a book, of such an international uh, group or gathering, but also to think about yourselves perhaps as a moment in time. And that uh, 2020 uh, looks like this, actually it's 2019, uh, because it was before COVID. Uh, perhaps 2021 will be 2020, and we will start to see how every year expresses uh, very important uh, moments. But I think the exclusions that we see is uh, not perhaps so much because of the of the blurring lines, institution and, and, and organization, but it is also because the world is not a fair space and that the world excludes and that photography uh, possibilities in many places of the world is, uh, is not drawn into international forums. And uh, perhaps we can take a commitment from wherever we are in the world to try and make that happen to at all stages try little by little to make sure that uh, the international world really becomes an international world. Yeah, I agree, uh, John. Uh, I think uh, trying to make sure that uh, the dominant perspective, the maybe dominant white Western perspective is more imbalanced uh, with all these talented photographers. We have also discovered uh, during this process, um, so photographers, but I think also um, schools and academies that we have discovered during this process that that are fantastic, um, coming from South America, coming from Asia, Africa. That's 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 fantastic. So, I am very much looking forward to um, to making big steps um, and to create a better program uh, in which everyone feels welcome and represented. Um, and I'm very happy that, that uh, Blurring the Lines is also not uh, just an award, uh, but that is, it's a publication and it's an exhibition. And uh, we try to create a community uh, through this uh, conference, uh, dialogue through this conference, but also a community maybe through uh, other programs we're developing at this moment. Uh, in January, we will be uh, organizing the first takeoff uh, together with Blurring the Lines in which we will connect uh, these uh, photographers to an international network of experts, uh, curators, editors. Um, so I think the ambition to actually make a change with this program uh, um, and stimulate dialogue and give a platform to these artists, uh, that is very exciting, I think. I think if I may add, I think one of the most important aspects is uh, not just for awards to be, uh, but how you activate awards. And I think this conference is the best example of it. Uh, the conference is an ongoing, it's an extension that makes this award somehow alive, that starts to exchange moments. And I think uh, that is really special. Uh, and so is the, the uh, continued programs. Uh, uh, you know, that, that Bazan had been speaking about. I think uh, that makes any award really special because it means that it's ongoing, that it draws people in and it builds community, as she said. So it's almost time to shift to the, um, to the afternoon session. Before that, I would like to, to say thank you to John and, and Lizanne um, for, for deciding to be part of this um, 
community, let's say. I like to call it, John, you said today something very nice. You said that photography today has to be really be about communities, right? So I like to think blurring the lines as a community. And I love the fact when such uh, amazing and talented curators uh, as you are uh, decide freely, voluntarily to join uh, such a program. And I hope really that uh, from next edition, we will be able to engage more interesting people and hopefully from other continents, as you said.